here. Elena Dobrencha can't believe her eyes. Since Friday, <laughs> she's been separated from her beloved family pet, Toby. But this reunion makes her a believer in miracles. It's just a miracle of God. It's all God. On Friday, the Dobrenchuks packed up their Houston home to move to Pensacola, where Delena's husband had gotten stationed. They left without beloved Toby, unable to find the cat anywhere. It was just difficult thinking, you know, he was out in the elements and he's declawed and he, he had never been out of that house in Houston. And that's what goes through your mind. It's, it's like a, it really is like a mother with a child. You know, you think, are they hurting him? Is he, is he defenseless because he's outside? The story of Toby's absence appeared on Monday's local Houston news. One viewer, Amy Garrison, said she fell for the family and wanted to help. So she called the number provided, got firefighters to head to the family's former home and found Toby stuck in the chimney. There was two huge trucks and nine firemen followed me over to the house. They were over there for almost an hour trying to get little Toby out of the chimney. A sponge bath and two tickets on Continental later, Amy and Toby appeared at Pensacola Regional, reunited with their mama, who couldn't be more grateful to those firefighters and to Amy. <laughs> it's not I mean, I take him when I go places, and he, you know, he's just, he goes on a leash, he talks to the house, he runs the household, and um, he's just a very special, very precious, precious animal to us. I don't really feel like I'm a hero. Um, Delina's family is in the military, and I think that there are heroes, and as an American, if we can't rally to stand behind them. It's an insult to everyone who's ever been in our military, and um, this is just what Americans do. We help each other. First, there was this. Then there was this. Then this. When Edwin Samuelson knocked the valve off a propane gas line Wednesday, emergency crews spent hours of overtime trying to contain the 4,000 gallons of potentially explosive propane. That's why there's now this, an estimated $20,000 the town of Salem has to come up with to pay for those services. We'll submit our costs, uh, what we you know, had to expend for this event. We'll try to, through the town, try to get reimbursement from uh, the person responsible. Once the overtime hours are tallied, Salem officials aim to file a claim with the driver's insurance company to help cover costs. They say it's what's done when someone hits a fire hydrant or a telephone pole, so the move makes even more sense now, with the price tag so high and town coffers so low. The little person never gets helped out. The town of Salem isn't the only one who lost money on the accident. Rosie's Place Restaurant in the Salem Marketplace Plaza was shut down for three days. No power, no gas, food everywhere. <laughs> it was a big mess. She's not alone. Salem residents also think the driver's insurer should step in to help cover cleanup costs. No, I, I believe the insurance company should be responsible for the charges and not us taxpayers because it was the driver's fault. But yeah, that's why we have insurance on our cars, right? Why should we have to pay? It wasn't our fault. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us this Wednesday. I'm Francesca Maxime. Bob has the night off. We have breaking news tonight. The $700 billion bailout has passed the Senate. ABC's Christiane Klein is in Washington, D.C. with all the details. This bill so heading. what do you think? Do you support a financial bailout of private financial institutions by Congress using taxpayer dollars? You can log on to WEARTV.com to give us your three cents. Well, getting a car loan during this credit crisis is tougher than it used to be. Channel 3's Grace White joins us live from Pensacola Honda. Grace, how's the credit crunch affecting them? All right, thanks, Grace. Well, the economic squeeze is being felt in Baldwin County as economic woes sent a one multi-million dollar development into foreclosure. Published reports show that a judge ordered the developers of the Bon Secours Village in Gulf Shores to pay banks $20 million for bad debts. The proposed $500 million development was supposed to showcase dozens of upscale homes and condos, but those homes didn't sell. Alabama economists say there are three reasons why developments like this one often fail. So either People who live near that project say the homes are just too expensive for the area. Dr. Epley says the best sellers in Baldwin County are homes under $200,000. The financial crisis is hitting home with some local banks. A national website recently gave several banks in our area a ranking of D or below. TheStreet.com is one of many independent companies that offers those bank ratings. First City Bank and Beach Community Bank in Fort Walton Beach were among the ones that received a D rating. 
The website posts its criteria from capital to stability, but bankers point out the rating companies do not have any inside information. They use quarterly reports filed with the FDIC, the same ones anybody can view on the FDIC website. They're just obtaining the, the director of Florida's Division of Financial Institutions says the ratings are useful, but they don't give a complete picture of a bank's financial health. Financial stress is being blamed for a 25% increase in domestic abuse calls to the state's hotline. The abuse hotline is receiving more than 1,000 calls a day right now. The Florida Department of Children and Families is looking into all calls, but with such an increase, the department is focused on responding to the most urgent reports. Now, to report any abuse, you can call 1-800-96-ABUSE. That number again is 1-800-962-2873. Well, in other news tonight, Santa Rosa deputies are investigating a murder. 86-year-old Bonnie Lewis was found dead in her home on Lewis Road last night in Milton. In custody tonight is actually the woman's son, 56-year-old David Lewis. Lewis is described as a suspect of interest in his mother's murder investigation. He was arrested on an outstanding warrant. Authorities say on September 10th, Lewis led deputies on a high-speed chase, and then he crashed his truck. Well, fall was in the air today, and it sounds like some areas could get down into the 40s and 50s. Chief Meteorologist Alan Strum has our first warning weather on the cool down. Hi, Alan.